Okay, and... Oh, we were already recording. So, it's no secret that I love science fiction and fantasy. In fact, that's the bulk of what I cover on this channel. But both of those genres have some pretty serious issues, and I think that's the main reason why they're still seen as a niche, at least in terms of books. Like, in terms of, like, comics and video games and movies and such, you will see more science fiction and more fantasy stuff, but it doesn't... I don't think it's quite reached the mainstream in terms of reading. Even though people know about stuff like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter, it still hasn't quite broken into the mainstream yet, and that's because both genres have pretty serious issues with originality. And without originality, people are gonna think, okay, that's just Lord of the Rings, but worse, so why would I bother reading it? And so, that's a very big barrier to getting new people in here. So, today, I'm just here to talk about the biggest issues that science fiction and fantasy have, and how to fix them. And again, it's all originality. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So let's start with fantasy. The thing about that is that it has huge variety in terms of setting. Like, the stereotype is something that's based on medieval Europe but has, like, dragons and elves and shit, but there's a lot more than that. There is that medieval setting, but then there's also, like, ancient setting. There's stuff with floating islands. There's uh, places where they live where ash blocks out the sun and they're ruled by an immortal demigod. Like, there's a lot of interesting settings in fantasy, uh, even if they aren't all necessarily big, uh, known fantasy. But there is a lot of that. It's crazy the amount of variety they have, and that's the wonderful thing about settings and world building, is that you can change it up a lot and be really weird and out there, and you can still have a pretty normal story and characters that people can uh, follow along with pretty easily. Fantasy also has a lot of variation in terms of what kinds of characters they have. Like, even the uh, stereotypical ones, like, you know, the old mentor wizard, or the wise king, or the farm boy who is reluctant to be a hero but is forced to be a hero, or the evil overlord. You know, all of those uh, cliches that we all know and love, or at least cliches that we all know, uh, even those are very well defined. Like, when you see one of those, you know, okay, yeah, this is what this guy is like. Uh, you know at least something about his personality and his motivation and all that. So they're... They're very well defined, even if they aren't necessarily original or likable. But then there's plenty of fantasy, both in the past and in the modern day, that breaks away from those molds, and we have tons of unique original characters all over the place. Someone like Richard Rawl from The Sword of Truth is really annoying and stupid, and in a lot of ways he's just a mouthpiece for the author's political and economic views, but he is an actual person. You know, I understand him and what makes him tick, even though I read that book, like, over ten years ago. I still remember what Richard Rawl was like. And for those of us who like fantasy, all this variation in terms of setting and character can help us look past the fact that the plot is kinda the same every time. Like, obviously there are exceptions, especially in the modern day, but be honest with yourself. Pretty much every fantasy series ever written, or at least every epic fantasy series ever written, has been about people trying to save the world from some sort of dark overlord. Maybe he's an evil god, maybe he's an evil wizard, or an evil king. The point is that he's gonna conquer slash destroy everything, and the heroes have to stop him. And possibly the, ch the hero who winds up defeating him for good is the chosen one, or some sort of farm boy, or both. Ever since Lord of the Rings did it, other people are just copying it, and, well, they might vi put some slight variation on it, but even more modern stuff a lot of times falls into that same tro trope of, let's save the world. Like, they never have anything that's on a smaller scale. Even Game of Thrones wound up falling into this trap near the end, because, you know, the White Walkers were coming in, they were going to destroy everything, so the heroes had to sort of wrap up their political differences, which had been the bulk of the show up until that point, and then that's how they were able to save things. And so, basically everything just falls into this exact same mold. And that's literally what Wheel of Time is about, guys. Like, Robert Jordan saw that the same story was being told over and over again, so he created a world where all of those exist in the same uh, world, it's just happening slightly differently every time. Each, uh, if you haven't read Wheel of Time, then 
everything like Lord of the Rings, Shannara Chronicles, all that is just a different turning of the Wheel of Time, where there's an evil overlord who's trying to destroy things and a chosen one who saves it. And again, it's a little bit different every time, but it's always the same events. Besides epic fantasy, other fantasy subgenres have, you know, different storylines, but the thing is, each subgenre also each has only one plot each. Like, young adult fantasy is just a girl who saves her homeland, perhaps the world, and she usually does it by being some sort of badass with crazy powers. Like, I know I've praised An Ember in the Ashes a little bit in the past, and I am excited for the last book, by the way, but the thing is, that's not a very original story, it's just one that does this exact same plot pretty well. And, and again, it does have pretty good characters, which allows me to look past that. Uh, and then you have middle grade fantasy, which is stuff like Harry Potter, and that's just a kid discovers some sort of hidden magical world, and then usually he has to save it. He becomes a part of it. And in urban fantasy, the story is almost always, let's keep magic a secret, because if normal people find out about it, mass hysteria, cats and dogs living together, I don't know, it, it usually doesn't make that much sense, but that is the plot line. And sometimes they'll be dealing with stuff like, oh, there's a werewolf murdering people and we have to catch them because the police don't know how to do it. You know, stuff like that. But the point is that each subgenre only has one storyline that they can use, and when there's no variety, newcomers don't see the point. They just see it as, okay, it's exactly like that other thing I read once, so why would I want to redo that? But despite that, fantasy is still much more popular than science fiction, at least on YouTube. And I think the main reason for that is that science fiction, while it does have a lot more story variety, you know, you, you will see tons of different stuff. You know, there's like tons of save the world stuff, obviously, and there's tons of like save the country stuff. But then there's like political thrillers, and there's small scale like heist stories. There, there's a lot of different uh, science fiction things because science fiction is generally seen as more of a setting, whereas fantasy is seen as both a setting and a storyline. But fantasy blows science fiction out of the water in terms of variation in setting and variation in characters. Stuff like space opera, military science fiction, alternate history, cyberpunk, those all feel different from one another and they all have their own uh, variety within each subgenre, but Think about uh, various science fiction that you've read over the years, like not just uh, more modern stuff, but classics as well. Now think about the characters from them. Like, were very many of them really that memorable? I mean, most memorable science fiction characters, even in classic ones, come from stuff with fantasy elements. Like, Dune is a good example. Dune has some really memorable, really unique, neat characters, but there's a lot of fantasy elements to that story. You know, like, there's essentially magic, and it, it, I don't know, D Dune is just, Dune is kind of its own thing, it's weird. Even when you look at classics like Foundation, like, how many characters do you really remember about that? Like, do you remember much about them at all, or do you remember more the world that it took place in, and the ideas that it brought forth? And that's the thing, like, if you have, like, big ideas and neat themes and this fascinating setting, then you can make people look past that, the same way that good characters can make people look past a shitty storyline in fantasy, but it still gets really obvious uh, and old after a while. Like, military science fiction is probably the worst in this regard. Like, I know I just made a video making fun of that genre not that long ago, but essentially there are three, maybe four archetypes that that, uh, that, that entire genre follows, and it works out okay because most of the time they're just manly men who are blowing shit up and trying to kill each other, and if you do it well, it works out. But sci-fi works out that way because even if they're the same characters every time, they're kind of doing different things every time. But that usually works out in all sorts of science fiction subgenres because even if it's the same characters every time, or even if they're like bland, not really memorable characters every time, you at least remember what they're doing because they're doing different things every time. And Pretty much the only science fiction that has come out in modern times that I've read and I've really connected with has been The Expanse, and that's mostly because The Expanse character cast is fucking amazing. I remember James Holden, I remember Josephus Miller, I remember Christian of Asarala, Bobby Draper, Amos Burton, Winston Duarte, Marco Sinaros. Like, I remember these guys, I know them. I understand what they're like as people, basically. You know, each of them is not only 
like a well-defined person with their own personality and hopes and dreams and all that, but most of them are at least somewhat likable. You know, even if people like Holden can get annoying sometimes, and even if people like Inaros are just horrible villains, you know, or, well, I don't mean horrible villains as in they're badly written or anything, I mean like they're horrible people, which makes them work well as villains, I still know them and I still sympathize with them on some level because that's one of the things The Expanse has done best is like even evil people are still people, they're still human. But pretty much every other science fiction I've ever read has, well, they, they've completely failed in this regard. At the same time, a lot of the best fantasy that I've ever read has been stuff that hasn't focused on saving the world. Like the first uh, couple of Powder Mage books were like that and they were the best ones, and like the last one really fell more into saving the world territory, but and that was what made it the weakest, but you know, it's still a good book. Uh, or Elantris, that's a phenomenal story, and it's more, more of a mystery about trying to save magical zombies from themselves than it is about saving the world. Like, it, trust me, that makes sense if you read it. Or uh, some of the D&D campaigns I've done over the years, some of them have been the, at their best when it's just, hey, let's kill this one evil wizard, not because he's trying to destroy the world, but because he's evil. He, he's a dick. He's hurt us personally. And, I, I mean, granted, part of that is just because, like, when it's a D&D &D campaign, you're in it. It's not you reading about someone else's exploits. But, you know, the point is that there's a variety in terms of the storyline there. Like, it's something different, if nothing else. Even if it's not amazing, it's at least different. And I'm not saying that uh, being original automatically makes it good. Like, there's plenty of stuff that is unique and original, but it still falls flat on its face. Uh, but I have to always give credit for originality at least a little bit. And so the point I'm getting at here is that in order to save both science fiction and fantasy from themselves, you have to sort of combine them. You know, science fiction authors should read more fantasy, and fantasy authors should read more science fiction, because in both cases, they each have a lot to learn. And I'm not just talking about, like, the big broad strokes about, like, oh, make better characters, make better settings, all that. Like, that, that's pretty obvious. But, I mean, even the tiny minutia about stuff like how to structure your story or how to actually write prose and everything, both uh, genres seem to be kind of separate in that regard. And I don't really know how to explain it. I spent a while thinking about how I could explain it, and I just, I just can't. But they are a little bit different, and I think mixing them together, they could learn from each other. And if they can learn from each other and improve their quality and actually be somewhat different every time, then I think they really could break into the mainstream. And once they break into the mainstream, I mean, that comes with its own host of issues, because then you're going to have... It's basically what happened with the young adult boom from like 15 years ago, where everyone and their grandmother just floods the genre with a bunch of... Just, just shit. Just a bunch of shit and it drags the quality down, makes it harder to find uh, good stuff in there, and then after a couple of years of it, people start to look down on it, and then people leave it again. Like, that's its own issue, though. Basically, what I'm saying is, don't be afraid to read outside your preferred genre, and don't be afraid to combine stuff. Anyways, that was a little more ranty than I anticipated it being, but, you know, it, uh, th those, those are my thoughts. And if you disagree with me, then feel free to put it down below somewhere, but that really is how I feel. You know, fantasy is more popular than science fiction on YouTube, at least, because it blows it out of the water completely in terms of character. And science fiction is more popular among people that, um, well, I, I guess pretentious assholes would be one way of putting it, but, like, people who look down on fantasy because, oh, it's just the same thing every time, it's just wish fulfillment fantasy, and so they read science fiction. That, that seems to be the case, at least to me. I don't know, but... I think this this is something that we genuinely could fix if we really put our hearts to it. Huge, huge, huge thanks to everybody who watched this far, and especially to my patrons whose names are here, and my ten dollar up guys are Oppo Savalanen, Ava Toomer, Brother Santodes, Christopher Quinten, Diana Dahim, Embis, Emily Miller, Evan Stigal, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, Madison Lewis Bennett, Nature Boy, NB Star, Rees E. Raula, Sad Mardigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, Vacuous Silas, and Vevictus. You are all really great, because without you, well, quite frankly, I wouldn't be able to do this. And if you want your name up here, and if you want stuff like early access to my videos, then 
consider becoming a patron. You know, it's all it takes is a dollar a month. And if you can't do that, then just sharing this video around, liking on it, commenting on it, you know, all that stuff, that helps too. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time.